Hey, welcome back to the videos. This is Setup Tips and Tricks video number six. And in this video, I thought we'd talk about a truss rod, what it does for your banjo neck, and how to adjust it. Uh, a rod in a neck basically functions as kind of a, a buffer against string pressure. String pressure on a fretted instrument, like a banjo neck, wants to fold the neck up like this. So the strings are actually trying to break the neck <laughs> if this was made out of a really flimsy material and you had to have enough strings at high enough tension the neck would actually just fold up and break. So it's kind of like a reinforcement rod but it also serves another function. Not only does it help keep your neck straight but it allows you to play around with relief. What does relief mean? Relief is a term that we use when we're talking about instruments to describe how much clearance there is between the top of the frets and the bottom of the strings. So when the strings are on the banjo, uh, they're you know enacting that string pull on the neck and the neck wants to flex. So with the truss rod, uh, depending on the type of rod you have in your neck, you can adjust the amount of bow in the neck. And why would you want to do that? Well, some instruments can play fine with a perfectly flat neck, a neck that's in what I call the neutral position. So uh, if the neck was perfectly flat and you played it with your setup on your banjo and you didn't have any buzzes and the playability was fine, then you could live with a perfectly flat neck. Some instruments and some styles of playing, you need a little more relief in the neck. And you typically want, say if you're an aggressive player, you want the strings a little higher so you allow a little more relief in the neck to give the strings a little more room to vibrate over the top of the frets without buzzing. So there are two main rods that you'll see in banjo necks that have a rod, a single one-way rod and a two-way dual action rod. This is a RK36 banjo that I have in the shop that's being worked on and it has from the factory a two-way rod. I much prefer a two-way rod myself but some of the older instruments like the vintage uh, instruments from the turn of the century that had rods had a one-way rod. So what is the difference? Well a one-way one -way rod, if I can spit it out, <laughs> you would actually be able to tighten the rod only. So you could stiffen the neck and we'll talk in a minute about what what the adjustments do for you when you make them but you'd only have a one-way adjustment which would tighten the rod. If you tried to loosen a one-way rod it would just keep getting looser and looser and eventually you would uh, de-thread the rod if you turned it far enough. A two-way rod like most of the modern makers use adjusts right and left. Now what do these adjustments do? Well this particular neck and this RK has a four millimeter uh, Allen set adjustment which means basically that the there's a hole in there and you can see that there's not an actual nut like you put a wrench on but a hole for a, a, an Allen wrench. Now the two main types of bow that you can put in the neck with the truss rod is concave, convex. So if you imagine if you were siding down the the neck, if you use the uh, binding as like a straight edge, if the neck has concave bow it will look like a smile. You would have, starting at about the second or third fret, up to about 17 or 18 or so, you would see kind of this like pushed in depression. The neck would actually sag in the middle. If the neck goes the other way, it's called convex. There would actually be a frown look. The nut to here would look, it would look like there was a hill or a raised area. Uh, which one is the best? Well, there is no best, but there are some extremes that you want to stay away from with a, any neck. You never want any sig significant amount of convex bowing. You don't want that heel because then the strings will actually just lay on the frets or if they don't lay on one fret it will definitely lay on some frets in front of it so you'll just have dead spots and buzzing everywhere. So having too much, if really, if much of any convex bowing, uphill bowing, bad news for your playability. Now you can live with a certain amount of concave bowing which will mean that there's more space between the strings and frets but if that gets excessive out of reason then yeah you'll have plenty of room and you can play the banjo really aggressively and you won't have any buzzes but then you'll notice that the banjo gets really hard to play because you have to press the strings 
so far down to compensate for that bow. And you'll also notice that as you go up the neck, in particular, the notes will become very sharp because you're stretching each string to get it down to the fret. So there is a happy medium you have to shoot for. But again, some players like a perfectly dead flat neck, which I call in neutral. And their banjo plays fine, and the style that they play can accommodate that. But some banjos and some player styles, they like to have a little, you know, concave bow. The only time that you would ever play an instrument with convex bowing, uphill bowing, would be some special circumstance where the maybe the neck is coming out of the banjo and somebody's trying to compensate for that. But usually that means there's something seriously wrong with the setup if you ever need convex uphill bowing. Something, something's really wrong with your neck or the setup of the banjo. So neutral can work and concave can work up to a certain amount, you know, then it gets to be out of bounds. So how would you adjust this? Now, of course, this banjo is, uh, this banjo neck is not in the banjo. Uh, it's better to make these adjustments, uh, small adjustments under string pressure. If you're going to make a major adjustment, you can take, turn the strings down on your banjo, not take them off, but, you know, reduce the tension by maybe half from standard pitch before you make a major adjustment. What is a major adjustment? On most good necks with a good truss rod, a half a turn is a major adjustment. Typically an eighth to a quarter of a turn will enact a significant change in your neck's uh, action. So if you, know, if you encountered a banjo where you had to turn the rod one complete 360 revolution, that something's going on with the rod or the neck because that's a lot in a typical made. In a well-made neck with a, with a rod that works the right way, a dual rod, it turns both directions, one complete turn is a tremendous amount. So you should never really need to turn a rod more than that unless there's something else going on that you know, we'll, we'd have to discuss in another video. But this is a two-way rod, so I'll insert this into the hole in the rod. Now, if I turn right, remember the old saying that they taught you in mechanics class, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Clockwise, if you're looking at this wrench as the face of a clock, say my hand's the face of a clock, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, clockwise, if you count backwards from midnight this way, left, it's loose. Now, every two-way rod has a neutral position. So if I put the rod in there and I start turning either direction, after I turn right so far, I'll encounter resistance. That's where the rod is just starting to put some uh, tightening on the rod. If I continue to tighten this, say there's a quarter of a turn, that's about a quarter, then I am actually putting convex bow in here. The rod is getting so tight that the neck is raising in the middle section here. It's going uphill, which again, you typically don't want. So, on this particular banjo, I'm noticing that about a half turn, that's about max. I don't think I would want to attempt to do that anymore. And of course, I have no strings on here, so I can do a little more turning because I have zero tension on the neck. If you have your banjo strings on, and you're going to make a small adjustment, say an eighth to a quarter of a turn, you can leave the banjo tuned to standard pitch. That's fine. But if you're going to try to attempt to turn the rod, say a half a, half a revolution of the rod, you should tune it down probably. So that's about max on this banjo. And sighting down the neck right here from behind, I can see I'm putting a pretty sizable convex uphill bow in there, which we don't want. So what I'm going to do is release that tension, and then all of a sudden, the rod is loose. So I'm in the neutral position. There's no tension on the rod. Now again, if I add strings on here, that neutral position might change because, you know, the neck's flexing under tension. So neutral might not be in the exact same space. But I thought it would be easier to show you these adjustments without the banjo being on the workbench. The rest of the banjo is actually, uh, I'm refitting a tone ring for this pot assembly. But now if I go left, which is lefty loosey, I'll go so far and then I'll start to encounter tension. So after about, about a quarter of a revolution there, I start to encounter tension. So that means I'm actually exerting a downward force on the rod now. If I continue to turn this, that's like 
almost a half a revolution, almost you know 180 degree turn to the left. I'm actually putting concave bow. I'm actually pulling the center of the neck down, so I'm putting that smiley face bow in there. If I need more than that, see the wrench is going to hit my pig head here, so I don't want to scratch the finish. So what I do is remove the rod, come back up to the 12 o'clock position, and now I can exert even more. Now that's about a half a turn or even a little more. That's all I would want to put in that neck. I can tell by the tension. So, you know, one of the things that's, you know, very commonly asked in the repair shop, a customer will come in here and say, John, I need my truss rod adjusted, and they typically are afraid to do it because they are afraid they're going to break the rod or break the neck or do some major damage. And I usually try to teach them while I'm here. I'm like, okay, I'll show you how to adjust this rod, and I'll show them how to, you know, make the the minor adjustments they typically need and if they need more than a minor adjustment I'll tell them to turn the strings down. You won't break this rod unless you really go crazy with your adjustments. So if you put the, the wrench in there you know and you just started turning and turning and turning and turning without paying attention to how much tension you're putting on the rod you could break the rod. It, I doubt you would really seriously damage the neck that the rod would probably break first but Breaking a rod would be like a couple hundred dollar repair job, at least, for most repair guys. But again, you're not going to break the rod unless you just go crazy. Like I said, for most rods on properly built necks, an eighth of a turn to a quarter of a turn is a minor adjustment. Half of a rotation is a major adjustment. So if you had to turn the rod 360 degrees, which I would not recommend for most well-made necks, that would be a huge adjustment. So we're talking about an eighth to a quarter for most minor adjustments, maybe half of a rotation for, you know, a major adjustment. Anything over half, I would be shy about doing. And at any point, if you're not comfortable doing this, you just, even after watching this video and you think you understand it, but you just don't want to do it, that's fine. Find a, you know, qualified person who knows about a truss rod to adjust it for you. But I try to teach most of my customers how to do this themselves so they don't have to bring it all the way to me and pay me to do this. This is part of routine maintenance for a freighted instrument with a rod. Now if you had a one-way truss rod, it's pretty easy to tell because you could tighten the rod. You could go righty-tighty. You could go this way clockwise and you'd encounter resistance. But then if you start going to the left, all of a sudden the rod would just turn and turn and turn and you would never feel it tighten the other way. That tells you you have a one-way rod. And you shouldn't turn a one-way rod too much to the left because you could actually de-thread the rod. The nut you know, could actually come off and then you'd have to go to the trouble of putting it back on. Now some truss rods like Gibson Banjos and some of the other makers use a quarter inch nut so the slot in the neck would accommodate you know, something small like a socket wrench. I like to use nut drivers and you would place the quarter inch nut driver inside there. Some other banjo makes like Vega, some of the turn of the century uh, jazz banjos had different size rods and the nuts were larger than a quarter inch. And some of the foreign made banjos I've seen have a nut to adjust but it's a metric, you know like five millimeter, four millimeter nut. Uh, but this is a quarter inch nut driver which will work on most you know, Gibson style banjos. So again the rod is trying to keep the neck at the amount of bow that you like. You could leave it dead flat, which is neutral, or you could put a little bit of concave, which is that frown downward bow, to give yourself a little extra room. But try to stay away, if possible, from any convex uphill bowing. That's usually a no-no. And righty-tighty, lefty-loosey on a two-way rod. On a one-way rod, you can only tighten the neck. You can only flatten the neck out and make small adjustments with the strings under full, say, G-tuning for a bluegrass banjo, and try like an eighth of an inch to a, uh, not an eighth, but an eighth of a turn, not an eighth of an inch, an eighth of the rotation of the rod to a quarter rotation being a normal adjustment, and then half of a rotation, half of a turn, would be a major adjustment, and I recommend you don't turn any rod more than one complete revolution unless there's a really good reason for it, you know the rod's not going to break. Same thing with lefty. 
So there you go. There's some truss rod basics. You can do it yourself. And I hope this video was helpful. Appreciate you watching. Thanks.